a series uh, called Hope uh, for the Christmas season because what the world needs now is hope. Amen. Amidst all that is wrong in the world, the true meaning of Christmas is a message of hope about what God has done to make the world right again through Jesus Christ. And that's why this Advent season, and this is called the season of Advent. The word Advent means coming. It's a celebration of the first coming of Christ. And so the Advent season, uh, as we go through the month of December, we're going to be focusing on Isaiah 9 verse 6, which is a promise of God. It is a celebration of hope that was given to Israel at a time when they were facing national disaster, a time shrouded in fearful gloom and despair and loss. And with the past two years dealing with the pandemic, dealing with the loss of loved ones, dealing with the social isolation, the economic challenges, and a slew of other difficulties, we need now more than ever the hope that comes through Jesus Christ. And that is the message of Christmas. Read with me, if you will, Isaiah chapter 9. Nine, verse 6. The scripture says, For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. And Isaiah 9 6 is actually a song. I won't sing it for you because I don't even know what the melody was when it was originally written and I'm not a very good singer, but it was a song. It was a celebration of hope, which opens with the words, nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. That's verse one of this chapter. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those that are in distress. These last two years have been a time of distress for many. Amen. There has been a lot of gloom, a lot of hurt, a lot of brokenness, a lot of sorrow, but God gives a promise here. There will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. And that's a message that we need to hear. How many of you are ready for no more gloom and no more distress? Amen. Praise the Lord. It's a message that we need to hear. And in this chapter, God turns the people's focus from their present predicament, from their present fear, from their present pain, from their, from their present hurt to the prophetic promise of hope about what he would do to set the world right again, how he would do it, how he would do it. How would God fix the world? How would God set the world right again? Through the birth of a child, the gift of his son. And in the midst of all that's wrong in the world, that is God's answer. A child would be born. God would send his son into the world. And this morning, as we start this new series for the season of Advent, we're looking at four names by which this child would be called. Four names for God's son. And these names help us to understand why God sent his son and how that helps to set the world right, how God helps to fix the problems this world has. Each name is a prophetic description of who Jesus is and what he does in our lives. And these names help us to know him more deeply, help us to understand what he means to us today and the hope that he brings to us. The first name that we're going to be looking at today is Wonderful Counselor. Wonderful Counselor. That's such a relevant topic right now. During a time where people seeking therapy or counseling is at an all-time high because depression rates, anxiety rates, grief rates, stress rates are at an all-time high. I read an article that said the need for counseling has grown exponentially during this pandemic, and the pandemic has resulted in counselors being inundated with people calling for help. They don't even have enough time to handle all of the people that are in need of help. And you know, there are many voices in the world that are claiming to have the answer. Psychologists, world religions, secular philosophies, self-help books, meditation gurus, they all claim to have the answer. But there's only one who not only has the answer, but he is the answer. And he is called Wonderful Counselor. Amen? The word wonderful in Hebrew is pele. And in the Bible, it's used to describe things that are beyond human ability, things that are difficult to understand. It speaks of doing the extraordinary or the extremely difficult. For instance, when Sarah, at the age of 90, 
God came and said she's going to bear a child. She laughed at the thought that she would have a child. And the angelic messenger replied, is anything too difficult? It's that word Pele that is translated wonderful in Isaiah 9, 6. He said, is there anything too difficult or too wonderful for the Lord? Job said, he does great things to marvelous. It's that word Pele. He does great things to marvelous or wonderful to understand. He performs countless miracles. Isaiah declares that the Lord is wonderful, Pele. He is wonderful in counsel and excellent in guidance. If you ever need guidance, you ever need help in making decisions, you ever need wisdom in things that you're facing, God is wonderful in counsel and excellent in guidance. Amen. He'll always help you to make the right choice. But the Bible uses the word Pele exclusively for God's deeds and God's words, never for human accomplishments or human wisdom. And the Hebrew word translated counselor is not so much our modern concept of a therapist or a psychologist who sits across the desk or across a, a, a living room staged area or today across a Zoom screen uh, for, from, uh, with a person who has a problem and says things like, well, tell me more how you feel about that. And tell me a little bit about your childhood. How did your parents treat you growing up? What was your experience? These are the kinds of things that a counselor might ask. But in biblical times, counselors didn't, weren't therapists, so to speak. Counselors were advisors. They gave wise guidance, wise instruction. They were strategists rather than therapists. And counselors didn't ask about your feelings. They gave wise advice to kings and other people of importance on the best strategy or the best plan to go to war or the best course of action in whatever circumstance that they might be facing. Jesus is the wonderful counselor because not only does he give amazing wise counsel that is beyond our capacity to figure out, but because he has the power and the grace to help us in whatever circumstances we face. Amen? Amen. So he not only gives us counsel, but he gives us the strength. He gives us the grace. He gives us the power to walk in whatever counsel that he has given us. So today we're going to consider several reasons why we want and need Jesus as our wonderful counselor. First, he's the wonderful counselor because we can trust that he has our best interests at heart. Why? Because he truly loves us. Amen. He's a wonderful counselor because we can trust he has our best interests at heart because he truly loves us. Our wonderful counselor genuinely cares about us. Amen. In John 15, 9 and 13, he says, I've loved you even as the father has loved me. There's no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. Jesus laid his life down for us. When we were still his enemies, that's how great his love is for us. He loved us all the way to the cross. He is completely invested in us, in our well-being, in our future. He is in it for the right reasons. Amen. Let me just illustrate it this way. Try making an appointment with a ther therapist or psychologist today and tell them, I need an appointment, but I can't pay you. Guess what? You're not going to get an appointment. Because they care as long as you can pay. Amen? But not Jesus. He's available 24-7. In fact, he paid for the privilege to be your wonderful counselor. Amen? And he's available 24-7. You don't have to make an appointment. He genuinely loves you and he cares about everything that you're going through. He cares about your well-being. He cares about the person you're becoming. He cares about your spiritual growth. He cares about your future. He cares about the sorrow of your heart. He cares about the pain that you're suffering. He cares about the brokenness of your soul. He cares about the anxiety that you have, the stress that you're struggling with, the depression that you feel. He 
places so much value and so much worth on you that he was willing to pay the ultimate price to be your wonderful counselor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can hear his love and concern in his words to his disciples when he says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trouble. See, he knew how they were feeling and he didn't want their hearts to be troubled. So he spoke words of comfort. He spoke words of hope to them. His caring spirit is seen again in Matthew 9, 36, where it says, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion upon them because they were confused and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. When Jesus sees people that are confused, that are hurting, that are helpless, he is moved with compassion. The words of an old hymn capture it well. The loving concern of Jesus, our wonderful counselor, are expressed in the words of there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. It says, there's not a friend like like the lowly Jesus, no, not one, no, not one. None else could heal all our souls' diseases. No, not one, no, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Amen. Jesus. No, not one, no, not one. Amen. Have you found him to be that friend like no other? The friend that sticks closer than a brother? Hallelujah to the name of the Lord. Lord. Being our wonderful counselor is not something he does. It's who he is. You see, therapists, they work a certain schedule, but when they're off the clock, they're off the clock. Amen. But he's not just a wonderful, he doesn't just do that. He is that. He is the wonderful counselor because he loves us. He wants to help us and he wants us to live the best life possible. He wants us to live an abundant life. That is his promise to us. Amen. Our wonderful counselor cares about us. And in 1 Peter 5, 7, he invites us to cast all of our cares all of our worries, all of our anxieties, all of our burdens upon him. Why? Because he cares for us. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad? Hallelujah. That whatever, whatever burdens your soul, you can cast it on him. That means you throw it off of your shoulders onto his. He's going to carry it. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah to the name of the Lord. Our wonderful counselor loves us so much. He, he not only gives us guidance and, 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 and uh, counsel, but he helps us with our problems. There is no counselor or therapist, no matter how sincere they may be or how much they may care about their clients, that's going to go home with their client. Well, Hello. I know that's right. Oh, no. Once the appointment time is over, you go home on your own. Amen. They're not going with you. They're not going to help you at home with your marriage. They're not going to help you at home with, okay, this is how you should parent your kid. They're not going to help hold your hand through a time of sorrow. They're not going to be with you in a time of depression. Amen. They're not going to. And, and that's not their job. But Jesus cares about us so much. He goes home with us. Hallelujah. He's with us 24 seven. He will never leave us nor forsake us. He loves us so much that he not only promises to be with us, but he promises to help us with all of our problems. How does that help come? There are times when he'll miraculously intervene and deliver us from our problem or solve our problem. That's the kind of help we like most. Amen. Come right now, Jesus, and heal me or heal my loved one or come right now and fix this problem, Jesus. And he does that sometimes. He does those miracles. At other times, he gives us strength to endure the problem. God, God took Israel out of the bondage of Egypt, but he kept them in the wilderness. Sometimes God takes us out of the problem. At other times, God keeps us in the midst of the problem. Amen. But that's God's help too. Amen. So sometimes he gives us strength to endure our problems. Sometimes he gives us the wisdom to work out or to, to resolve the problem or to navigate our way through a situation. He will help you deal with whatever situation you face and he will give you peace even in the most stressful and difficult times of life. He will be there 
for you. Hallelujah. I've proven him time and time again. Amen. Praise the Lord. In Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, he gives us this promise. Come to me, all ye who labor and are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Is your soul heavy burdened today? Are you carrying a weight of problems, of grief, of difficulties? Jesus says, come to me. You don't have to carry it alone. Come to me, and I will give you rest. Let's be honest. Life is hard sometimes, and right now, a lot of time. And we may find ourselves straining beneath the burdens, feeling overwhelmed. But what a wonderful promise. He will never turn his back on us. He cares for us. And he will carry those burdens. He is the divine burden bearer. And he will give us rest. That's why he's called the wonderful counselor. But this is an invitation. He says, come unto me. He's not going to force himself. He's not going to force his help on us. We need to come to him. We need to call on him. And he will answer us. He will help us. And he will give us rest for our souls. If you are burdened today, won't you come to him? Won't you come to the wonderful counselor and find the rest, receive the rest that he wants to give you? The second thing I want us to see about our wonderful counselor is that he knows us inside and out. He knows us inside and out. Our wonderful counselor knows us better than anybody else. Amen. The fact is that our knowledge of other people is limited. Even our knowledge of ourselves is limited. And there are people here today and some that are joining us online whose hearts are burdened and their souls are troubled. And none of us know what they're going through. They put their Sunday morning clothes on, they put a smile on their face, and they walk through these doors, and we don't even know what they're going through. I tell the truth, and even if they were to come to me or to come to you and share a little bit of what they're experiencing and, and ask us to pray for them, we only know the little bit little. that they tell us. But Psalm 139 reminds us that God created us and he knows us better than we know ourselves. I love that Psalm. It says, Oh Lord, you have examined my heart and, and know everything about me. Hallelujah. You know when I sit down or stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I'm going to say even before I say it, Lord. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me yes. too great for me to understand he's the wonderful counselor because he knows us intimately there is nothing hidden from him you know when you're counseling you can only go based on what the person is telling you and uh, a lot of times they don't tell you what's really going on you know, they just tell you a little brief, brief snippet of what they're comfortable sharing with you. But Jesus knows us inside and out. He knows every thought before we think it. He knows every word before we speak it. So even the things that are unspoken, that we may be afraid to verbalize or ashamed to say, he knows it. Hallelujah. He knows the things in the depths of our heart that we might not even be aware of. You know, sometimes we don't even know our own heart, the Bible says. So, so we don't know why we may be feeling the way that we are feeling. And, 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 and we might keep finding ourselves in, in the same unhealthy situations over and over again. We don't understand why. But there is nothing hidden from the Lord. John 2.25 tells us no one needed to tell him about human nature, for he knew what was in each person's heart. He knows what's in your heart right now. He knows everything you're feeling, everything you're struggling with, everything you're carrying. He knows everything about us. And that's why he is truly the only one qualified to help us, to lead us, to guide us, to be our wonderful counselor. Amen. 
And our wonderful counselor doesn't only know everything about us, but our wonderful counselor understands our struggles. Amen. He understands our struggles. Jesus is the wonderful counselor because he understands our weaknesses, our struggles, and all that we're feeling and going through. In Hebrews 4.15, it tells us he can sympathize with us because he has faced all the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. Have you ever been going through a trial and well-meaning and caring people have said, I understand, I understand what you're going through. And deep down in your heart, you're saying, you don't understand. You don't understand. I was speaking with an old friend from uh, more than 30 years ago, uh, earlier this year, uh, when he was diagnosed with stage four cancer and somehow through th uh, God, you know, we reconnected and I was speaking with him and sharing my testimony. And when we finished talking, he thanked me and he said, thank you because you understand, you get it. I can talk to you. Why? Because he knew I had gone through what he was going through. I had felt what he was feeling. Amen. I lived what he was living. And so there was a connection there. But, but let me tell you this, there is no human being who's ever been through everything that you'll face. But Jesus, Jesus, he became one of us. He went through the full spectrum of human experience. So he understands everything that we feel and experience. If you've ever felt alone, if you've ever felt that no one understands, I want you to know today, Jesus understands. Jesus understands. If you've ever struggled with sorrow or pain or grief, Jesus knows just what you're feeling. He stood by the graveside of a dear friend named Lazarus. And he wept. He wept. Jesus is called the sorrowing Savior because he knows our griefs and our sorrows. If you've ever struggled with temptation, Jesus came face to face with the devil in the wilderness and Satan threw everything he had at Jesus, every temptation. He understands how hard it can be. If you've ever worried about your future or experienced terrible stress or agony, Jesus agonized in the Garden of Gethsemane. His stress was so great that he sweat drops of blood. If you've ever experienced injustice or felt like life was unfair, Jesus was an innocent man, falsely accused, condemned, and executed to death. He knows what it means to be treated unfairly or unjustly. Whatever you're feeling, whatever you're going through, Jesus understands. That's why we can come confidently to him. The Bible says, wherefore we can come boldly before his throne, expecting to receive mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. He's not going to condemn you because of the way you're feeling. He's not going to condemn you because you're struggling. He's going to have mercy on you because he understands. He's been where you are. Hallelujah. The third principle we see our wonderful counselor is committed to help us. Our wonderful counselor has a plan for a better life and future for us. Jeremiah 29, 11, one of my favorite verses. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for evil, or some versions say disaster. Plans to give you a future and a hope. Hallelujah. This was given to a people who were grieving and discouraged and had gone through one of the most terrible times in their life. And they were questioning, God, where are you? God, why? God, why? But it was a promise to the Jewish people, to his people, who because of their sin, their homeland had it invaded, their home and their place of worship destroyed, their loved ones, many of their young men had been killed or carried away captive as exiles into a foreign land. And the future looked terribly bleak and gloomy for them. 
But in the midst of all of that darkness, all of that pain, all of that sorrow, God says, I've got a plan for you. And it's not a plan to harm you or to hurt you. But it's a plan that is for your good. You know, sometimes we don't understand how difficult God can bring anything good out of difficult circumstances that we go through. That's right. That's what he can. But he can. That's right. He can. Amen. He says, I've got a plan. It's a plan for your good to give you a future and a hope. And the Bible says that he is perfect in all of his ways. Even when it might not seem it to us. But remember, we're looking at just a snippet in time. And we're trying to judge the whole by just that snippet in time. But God sees everything. He sees the full picture. He sees the full picture. Our perspective is limited to our past and to our present. But God knows our past, our present, and the future. He knows exactly how to guide us through the situation we're in and get us out of the mess that we're facing. He knows how to get us from where we are to the best life that he has planned for us. He knows exactly the path we should take to experience the abundant life that he desires for us. He knows exactly the road to fulfill his purpose and to take us to our eternal home one day in his presence. Our wonderful counselor counsels us through his word and guides us with his spirit. Psalm 119, 105 says, Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light to my path. Sometimes, you know, in the darkness of our situation, it's hard to see a way through. But God's word is a light. It lights up even the darkest path and enables us to see the way through. Hallelujah. That's why when you're going through a dark time, I know you don't feel like it, but that's when you need most to be in his word. You need to read his word. You need to listen to his word. You need to be in church to hear his word. You need his word then more than ever because it is a light in the midst of the darkness to light your path for you, to show you the way. His word will counsel us. His word will counsel us yeah. on the path to take. His word will counsel us how to treat our spouse, how to parent our children, how to manage our finances, how to do our job, how to deal with our emotions, and just about every other area of life. His word will counsel us. Yeah. And his Holy Spirit, his Holy Spirit who comes to live inside of us, helps us to understand his word helps us to relate it to our situation and then empowers us to live it empowers us to apply his word to our lives so that we can realize the life the promises the purpose that God has for us and the life that God desires for us his word is the road map and his holy spirit is our guide spend time in his word daily spend time in worship and in prayer daily so that you can receive the counsel of his word and the guidance of his holy spirit Jesus has made it possible for the Holy Spirit to come and live inside of us. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. The baby laid in a manger that we see in those nice, neat nativity scenes. And we talk about at Christmas that baby is God come in human flesh. He has come down to us. And he is the wonderful counselor. He knows us completely. He loves us fully. And he is committed to guiding us and helping us through all of the trials of life. And directing us to the best life possible. The life he has planned for us. A life of less pain and problems. A life of purpose and peace. A life that will eventually lead us to spend eternity in his presence. Hallelujah. Christmas is a celebration of hope. Because no matter what you're facing, you have a wonderful counselor who invites you to come to him, to trust him, 
to be your guide, to trust him to be your wonderful counselor, helping to, to guide you through life's issues, to walk alongside of you, to supernaturally help you in every situation and difficulty that you face. But the first step to coming to Jesus as your wonderful counselor, the first step to finding the guidance, the rest, the help, the strength, the peace that you need is to enter into a relationship with God. When the Bible tells us that we have all sinned and because of our sin, our relationship with God is broken. We were spiritually dead, cut off from God. But that's the reason that unto us a child was born and a son was given. He is our Savior. He came to earth, lived a sinless life, and offered his life on the cross for us. He took our place. He endured our punishment so that when we repent of our sins, and the word repent simply means to turn away from, we say, Lord, I recognize I've been living life my way. I've been living life sinfully. I don't want to live that way anymore. I turn away from that, and I turn to you. I need you. I want to live for you. That's repentance. And when we repent of our sins and we place our faith in him, that very moment, Jesus says we're born again. We are forgiven and we are made spiritually alive and we are brought into relationship with God. We become his children and he is our father. And that's the beginning of a wonderful lifelong relationship with God. And that's the beginning of being able to know and trust him as our wonderful counselor. And if you're here today, and you have not yet placed your faith in Jesus and repented of your sins, but you want to. Or maybe you did it some time ago and you've drifted away. But you can feel God tugging at your heart and you know you need to come back to him. I want to invite you to pray this prayer with me. It's just a simple prayer. My words are not special, but I just want to help you to be able to pray as you come to Jesus. Would you pray this prayer with me? Dear Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. And I believe that you love me so much that you died for my sins. Today, I repent. I turn away from my sinful life and I turn to you in faith. I confess that I'm a sinner and I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins. I invite you to come live inside of me and help me from this day forward to live for you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer and you meant it, I want to be the first to congratulate you and tell you that that's the best decision of your life and welcome to the family of God. Can we give a hand clap of praise to the Lord? Amen. If you just prayed that prayer, I want to ask you to text I prayed to the number on the screen or online if you will type I prayed in the comments. We just want to send you free of charge a little booklet that helps you understand the prayer that you just prayed and how to continue now in your relationship with God. The next steps to continue in your relationship with God. It's free of charge, but we need your name and email address to be able to do so. So please either text I prayed to the number on the screen or online type I prayed a little bit later today. You'll get a response message with a link. Click on that link fill in your name and your email address so that we can send this little booklet to you free of charge to help you continue on in your faith journey with the Lord. Very quickly for those that just gave your heart to Christ and for all of us because every Christian needs to be doing this on a regular basis. One, talk to God every day. That's called prayer. Begin by thanking him for the good things in your life because every good thing comes from him. And then talk to him about whatever problems, struggles, needs, or decisions that you're making and ask his help. That that's the basics of prayer. Do that every day. He wants to hear from you. He loves you. Secondly, let God talk to you every day. You say, well, how does God talk to us? Well, the number one way is through the Bible. That's his word, his message to us. If you don't have a printed Bible, you can download the YouVersion app for free on your phone or tablet and read as much as you want. It is always free. And I encourage you to start in 1 John. 1 John is a short book in the New Testament who tells, that tells us who Jesus is and what he's done for us. Every day, just read five or six 
six verses before you read. Ask God to help you understand and apply to your life whatever you're reading. What you don't understand, put it to the side. When you need to understand it, God will help you understand it. But what you do understand, take it and pray and ask God to help you to apply it to your life. Let God speak to you every day through his word. Thirdly, find a local assembly of God church and get connected. Put down roots deeply in that church. Don't just sit on a pew and attend a service, but, but get connected in the various ministries and fellowships so you can begin to build those relationships that will be there to encourage you and support you and strengthen you uh, in your journey with the Lord. If you're here in, in South Florida, of course, we welcome you to New Life. We have a wonderful church family here and would love you to be a part. If you're outside of the South Florida area, then please find an Assembly of God church near to you and put roots down deep in that church. Once again, congratulations on making the best decision of your life. For those of us who have already placed our faith in Christ, I want to encourage you to come to Jesus. He said, come to me. Invite him to be your wonderful counselor. Invite him to help you in every step of your life, in every problem that you face, in every struggle that you're enduring, in every decision that you're making. Invite him to be your wonderful counselor. Ask him to help you, to guide you, and to supernaturally work in your life. And I want to ask you to make a commitment today to daily spend time in the Bible and in prayer and in worship because it is through those activities that we experience his wonderful counsel in our life. So if you would say, yes, I'm going to invite him to be my wonderful counselor, and I'm going to begin the habit of daily or increase the habit or rededicate myself to the habit of daily spending time in his word and in prayer and worship so that he can be my wonderful counselor in all that I'm facing. If that's the commitment that you would make this morning, would you stand to your feet and let us pray together? Heavenly Father, I just thank you right now for all of those that are standing before your presence. I thank you, Lord, that they have heard your word and that they have received it with faith and with gladness of heart. And as we stand before you today, Lord God, we thank you for sending your son to be our wonderful counselor. Lord, we need you. We need you every single day because life is hard. But you come alongside of us and you help us and you bear our burdens. You strengthen us. You give us peace. You guide us. You are our sufficiency, our all in all, everything that we need. And Father, I pray that you would help each and every one of us to invite you daily to be our wonderful counselor by spending time in prayer, by spending time in worship, and by spending time in your word. And Father, I pray right now, especially for those that are heavy burdened, I pray right now, especially for those who are going through a difficult and dark time, a, 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 a darkness that might be magnified, because of the holidays and because of the expectancies of being happy or being with family or whatever it might be and, and that can magnify all of the difficult things we're going through. I pray that you would minister to those hearts. I pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit, hope would fill their hearts and their minds, Lord God. Encourage them, strengthen them, minister to them. And let your peace fill their hearts and minds, Lord God. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's sing together.
Hallelujah, Lord. We worship and exalt your name, Lord God. And Father, we pray even after the service has been dismissed, Lord God, that your word would continue to speak to and encourage hearts and that your spirit would continue to minister to the souls of your people. Let your blessing be upon your people today. Keep them safe. Let them be refreshed and renewed this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Thank you so much for coming this morning and have a wonderful week. God bless you. Thank you for joining us online. Have a wonderful Sunday.